physical layer exploration physical mode you will trace the physical path of IP packets from a home in Monterey, California to a web server at the University of Hawaii on the island of Oahu, Hawaii. You will do this packet tracer and on your computer. A student lives in Monterey, California and regularly uses a web browser to access the University of Hawaii's website at www.hawaii.edu as she views the information downloaded from the web server to her computer she becomes curious about how the IP packets travel between Monterey and Hawaii what is the path those packets actually take and how did they travel over the Pacific Ocean? There are many different possibilities of what path the packets may take depending on the following. The location of the client computer, the client's internet service provider, ISP, the location of the server computer, the server's ISP, how the various internet service providers, ISPs, and other entities interconnect to form a path between the client and the server. You will begin to get an understanding of some of the various entities and organizations involved in making sure IP packets travel successfully between two devices on the internet. You will see how packets between your home computer now as a client computer travel to a web server requirements a pc with packet tracer installed and a connection to internet using a mobile device for this activity is not recommended instructions examining local ip addressing information what is my IP before address? Your IP address is used to identify your computer when sending and receiving packets, similar to how your home address is used to send and receive mail. You can use the ipconfig command on Windows and the ifconfig command on Mac OS and Linux. Click the home PC sitting on the desk and then click desktop tab common pro okay look at this um, desktop pc click here desktop common pro ip config command ip config okay enter This is your IP before others, 192.168.0.75. This is your subnet mask and the default gateway, 192.168.0.1. The IP before others is 192.168.0.75, which is known as a private IP before others. Most client computers and other devices use a private IP before others. These are devices that do not require another device to access it from internet. Private IP before addresses are used to conserve the limited number of globally rootable public IP before addresses. Repeat this step on your own device. What is the IP before others and the full gateway for your device? Okay, open common prompt on your device. The common prompt or use this common prompt, CMD common prompt. IP config. Okay, in my case, I have an Ethernet adapter. 
This is the IPv4 address 192.168.110 and the default gateway 192.168.11 using IPv4. This is the IPv6 default gateway and this is the IPv6 address on my Ethernet adapter. Maybe in your case you will have a wireless LAN adapter using Wi Fi. What is the IP for others for my router? This same Windows IP config command shows the IP for address of your local or home router, also known as the default gateway. Notice that our local router has the IP for address of 192.168.01. Okay, remember this 192.168.01. This is the router that connects your local home network to you, your internet service provider's network and gives you access to internet. What is the IP for address for your router? Okay, in my case, this is 192.168.11. What is my public IPv4 address? Private IPv4 addresses are not rootable on the internet. When IP packets leave your network, they need to have their private IPv4 addresses replaced with a public IPv4 address. The public IPv4 address is used by servers or any other destination to send packets back to your client computer. Where does this translation between private and public IPv4 addresses occur? Your local router does these translations for you. How can you find out the public address that your local router substitutes for your private IPv4 address? On your device, search the internet for what's my IP. Some search engines will tell you your public IP for others without the need to visit another website. Many internet service providers have begun to use IPv6 addresses. Private addresses are only necessary to conserve the limited number of public IP for addresses. Using two different addresses and translating between them is not required for IPv6. In the packet tracer, close the command window and go to web browser. Okay, on packet tracer PC, click here. Close command prompt, open web browser, and type triple W tell me my IP.com. Triple W tell me my ip.com and go go and wait a moment Okay, and uh, public IP before others 1070-9327. This is the internet service provider, Comcast Cable Communications. The location and geo location. Okay, this website is fictitious and currently only exists in Packet Tracer. In addition to the public IPv4 address, notice that the website we use it provided other information including the name of your ISP and geographical location.
The ISP information is usually very reliable. However, the geographical information, city, state, and country, and geolocation, latitude, and longitude is not always completely accurate. On your device, use the one of the what is my IP websites you found in your search. List your public IP before others location and ISP. So what is my IP before others? Okay, show my IP.com. Okay, this is my IP before others, my public IP before others. 179.7.224.2. Okay, this is the IP4, IPv6, another information like mm, the Internet Service Provider, America, Mobile, Peru, the location. the city and region and this is not accurate examine the connections in your network what does the connection look like between your device and your router is it wireless or wired okay on pocket racer you can see a cable uh, a wired connection to get this uh, green uh, cable goes from the PC here to the uh, to this home router it's a wired connection on packet racer okay in my uh, case uh, I have an Ethernet connection so this connection is wired. Maybe you have uh, Wi-Fi or wireless connection. And don't worry if it's different. Where is the router that your device uses to access internet? Okay, uh, on Pocket Tracer, this is the router, the home router. Okay, this home router. Okay, this home router. Okay. But in my case, is this connection to the PC? And this another connection to the router. What does the connection look like between your router and the internet? Does it use a cable from the cable company or the phone company? Is it wireless? Can you find the cable that it leaves your house or see the remote tower if it is a wireless connection? Okay, on Packet Racer, this is a cable between the home router and the modem. And this, another. Uh, gray cable is the and this is the the cable that leaves the house okay. okay in my case this is the cable that leaves the house okay search youtube for this video This is not your average home network. 
But I have a video that will show you the different ways to connect to internet. You can uh, use the link on the description or use this link to view the video. Trace a path between source and destination. You will use trace root command that is used for network diagnostics and for displaying the path packets. Take to a destination. It gathers information about every hop from your device to the destination. Each line in the output designates the IP address of a router. Use it to forward packets from one network to another network. These are known as hops. In Windows, the command is tracer, whereas the Mac OS and Linux operating systems use the trace root command. Use trace root to display the path from Monterey to Hawaii. In Packet Tracer on the Home PC close web browser window, if it is still open from the desktop and click Common Prompts. Okay, go to the, the PC. Common Prompt. And Tracer, triple W Hawaii.edu. Tracer, triple W Hawaii. That you enter. Okay, very good. The packet tracer will take some time to resolve the domain name hawaii.edu to the IPv4 address. On your laptop or other computer, open a terminal window and enter the trace root command for your operating system. Your output will be different from the output below and the output in packet tracer. Your output will most likely show the names of real routers and public IP4 addresses. Okay, um, my computer, tracer, triple W, uh, why that idea? Okay, try again.
In my computer, uh, the try cert is not reaching the destination. But don't worry. Uh, okay, this is the try cert. And maybe, uh, don't worry because you will have a request timeout at the end. Um, pocket racer, the tracer, the tracer command to hawaii.edu reaches the final destination. Very good. And on my computer, request timeout on 16 and 17 hops. And don't worry, is expected. When the output begins to time out, it's for the 15th and 16th hop in the above output, enter, enter Ctrl C to end the trace route. Otherwise, it will continue until the maximum of 30 hops is reached. The trace route begins to time out in this example because the router at the end of the path is most likely configured to not reply to trace routes requests. The first highlighted entry in the example shows the first hop as one. Okay, this is the first hop. In Packet Racer PC, this is the first hop. Now this is your default gateway. In my uh, computer, the first hop is this, the default gateway. Look at this, my default gateway, IP before the default gateway. Look closely at the first line of the output. The three numbers preceding the IP address are timestamp values, such as three milliseconds, four milliseconds, five milliseconds for the first hop. This is the round trip time between the source device and the router at uh, that IP4 address in milliseconds. The trace route also includes the IP address of the root interface that received the packet from the source of the trace route. The client computer. The highlighted entry in the example shows that the first router has an IP4 address of 10.0.0.1. Okay, in the example, the router is uh, 10.0.0.1. Round trip time between the source device and the router at this IP4 address. Okay, on um, Packet Racer PC, the round trip time of three packets. One, two, three packets. Okay, between the source and this destination. Okay, in my PC, The source is my PC, the destination, my default gateway, this IP, and the round trip time of three packets. Okay, less than one millisecond. Some hubs may also include the my name information used by the service provider to help document information about the router just like this okay for example this this is the name and this is the ip address okay on packet tracer pc you don't have uh, names but on the real uh, the real test for example you have this this name and this ip address 
name and IP address. On your device, try tracing the route to other websites such as www.netagat.com or www.google.com. Some hubs will probably time out. Some web servers may not respond to trace route. Okay, on my real PC, on my computer, tracer www.google.com. Notice is using IPv6. Okay, and Control C. Control C and try to use IPv4 dash four tracer dash four triple w google dot com. Okay, very good. 10 hops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hops. The four gateway, another hops, and the destination using this name. This is one of the million of servers of google.com. It's IP address. Investigate the second hub in the trace route output. The trace route shows a second hub. Hub number two, this IP address. The IP packets now leave the home network and are sent to the internet service provider. The 10.120.89.61 is the IP for others of the first router outside the local home network. This router belongs to the internet service provider this router is known as the Internet Service Provider's Point of Presence or POP. This is where the ISP provides its customers access to Internet. The physical connection between the end user and POP is known as the local loop or is sometimes referred to as the last mile. Traditionally, the local loop was the telephone lines from a customer's premises to local telephone exchange, sometimes referred to as the central office CO. The copper twisted pair cables were used to carry analog voice and signaling information. Today, the local loop may also include cables to carry digital information, which may be wired or wireless. In terms of internet connectivity, the local loop connects the customer's premises to the internet service provider POP, the point of presence. And the local loop may be one of the several different types of connections, including cable connection, typically using the same coaxial cable used for TV and phone, DSL, digital subscriber line, using the same telephone line for the phone and TV, wireless signals or wireless local loop, WLL, including cellular technologies, satellite connection, typically the same benamed signal is used for TV, Fiber optic cable, dial up access telephone line using same twisted pair copper cable used for phone. Okay, go to PC on Packet Racer, click here. This is the second hub. This is the point of presence. Three uh, round trip times of three packets. This is the point of presence, pop, of the internet service provider. On my real PC, and 
the tracer to google.com this is the point of, of presence request timeout because this router is configured to not respond the the uh, a tracer test we got this the second hop request timeout request timeout in packet tracer notice that the home pc on the desk is connected to the home router on the shelf behind the desk however the home router is not connected directly to the router at the next hub instead it is connected to a cable modem this cable modem is not a router therefore it is not reported as a hub in the trace route oh. okay look at this this is the router the home router and the home router is not connected directly to the point of presence is connected to the cable modem but cable modem is not considered as a hub navigate to monterey notice that the nets hub is physically linked to the comcast point of presence building okay uh, click here back level this is the home look at uh, this is the cable that leaves the home that leaves the house and go to comcast point of presence building Comcast point of presence. Uh, POP is physically located in a data center. A data center is a physical facility that organizations use to host their critical equipment, applications, and data. The key components of a data center design include routers, switches, firewalls, storage systems, and servers. Also, the Comcast point of presence would typically be a data center in the real world in packet racer it is only storing the equipment necessary for this activity okay and clip on comcast pop this is the cable that goes from the house to this location In the rack, you will see several devices, including a device simulating the cable modern termination system, CMTS. Okay, this this is the the cable modern termination system, CMTS. The Comcast Pop Monterey router is this multi-layer switch and two servers multi-layer switch and two servers investigate the physical connection between the devices one interface of the Comcast CMTS is linked directly to the cable modem in the home network okay this is the cable that goes from from this uh, point of presence to cable modem in the house the other interface is connected to the nest hub router comcast pop monterey which is rugged directly below it okay this there is a fiber connection from the cmts to the router the the Comcast point of presence moderate second interface links out the Nets hub, which you will investigate in the next step. Okay, this another fiber connection goes from this router to another router to the Nets hub. The third 
interface is connected to the switch, which is then connected to two servers. This is the third interface uh, copper cable that goes from the router to the switch and then to the servers. The DNS server is the DNS server is translating the triple w hawaii.edu and triple w tell me my ip.com to the respective ip for others. The web server is serving the website triple w tell me my ip.com. Okay, this is the DNS server and this is the web server. In your own network, what is the technology for the local loop you are using? Cable, DSL, satellite, cellular. If it is a wired connection, see if you can find the cable leaving your home network. Where does it go? To a telephone pole underground? Okay, in my case is a cable connection. But there are different ways to connect to the point of presence. Uh, you can use the previous video, use the link in the description or use this link to access the video and view some details. The second hop in your trace root command on your device is typically your ISP's pop. What is the IP address of your ISP's pop? In my case, I can't I can't see the IP address because this router, the point of presence, is configured to not respond the the tracer test. This is in my case, may vary in your case. Attempt to discover a look of the IP address for your internet service provider point of presence. Who owns the point of presence for the second router in your trace route output? You can search the internet for IP lookup, which will result in a list of websites that will give you information about an IP address. Fill in the table below with the information you discovered from your IP lookup research. You may need to visit several different lookup websites to get all the information. The second hub is not responding with uh, the round trip time and IP address. Okay, no IP address and, and time. No IP address and time. Okay, but in your case, this may vary. You should have the round trip times for the packets and an IP address. But I think the in my case, the third hop also belongs to the internet service provider. So I will use uh, IP address lookup for this, this IP address of the third hub. IP address lookup. Okay. Click here. Enter the IP address. This the IP address of my third hub. Okay. 
it is always the same okay very good get IP details okay and did you know you have a private IP address okay what is a private IP address this is the range for private IP addresses and this IP address is in the range of this okay so this is a um, private IP address private IP address private IP address and private IP address so my internet service provider is using private IP addresses for the wide area network okay so I will use the seven hop the seven hop uh, may vary but in this case the seven hop is a public IP address it is 142 and 142 and notice that 142 is not in the range of private IP addresses okay so I will use uh, this public IP address for the IP lookup okay but this is information about Google the Google data center and obviously Google is not my internet service provider okay but remember you can see you can use uh, this lookup what is my IP before address And now you can see your IP before others. This is my public IP before others. And this is this is not shown on Tracer. This uh, this is the public IP before others of my router, but it's not shown in the tricer okay but anyway you can get all the information about this public ip for others so the second hub ip for others this will be the I will use the public IP before others. This is like the second hop. Okay, this is like the second hop, and you can get the information about the internet service provider. Internet Service Provider, America, Mobile, Peru, City, Region, Country, City, La Victoria. This is not accurate, but it's close and Region. Lima, this is not accurate, but it's close. 
and country Peru. Okay, this is accurate. This is true. Okay, and you have all the information. The information regarding the name of the ISP is usually very reliable. However, the physical location information may not be accurate. In many cases, the physical location listed may be hundreds of miles from where the router and the data center are actually located. It could be the ISP's administrative office or even a random location. Okay, this is true because the, the region in the lookup is Lima, and Lima is here, Lima is here, but my real location is here, Puno. And the physical location listed may be hundreds of miles from where the router and the data center are actually located. Step four, investigate why geolocation information is not always accurate. Search the internet for 600 million IP addresses, Kansas. You will find several articles about an ISP that choose to use a geolocation latitude and longitude at the center of the United States to register over 600 million of its IP addresses. Unfortunately, this particular latitude and longitude happened to be a private home in the middle of Kansas and not an ISP. So you can search 600 million IP addresses Kansas. 600 million. IP addresses Kansas. A couple who says that a company has registered their home as the position of more than 600 million IP addresses. The pair's home has been linked to the IP addresses because it's close to the geographical center of the United States. IP addresses, which are identifiers associated with computers or networks or computers connected to internet, commonly identify individual properties. But they can often be more vague than that and sometimes give inaccurate information. Investigate the local ISP network. For the example of real trace route output shown below, hubs 2 through 9 all belong to Comcast. From 2 to 9 all belongs to Comcast. This is a real example. Recall that the real IP for addresses for these routers have been modified for this activity. In Packet Racer, navigate to Monterey and then click the Monterey.ca building. Okay, and back level and go to Monterey. CA. Click here. Notice that the two routers in the rack belong to Comcast.net. And you can hover your mouse over each router to see the IPv4 addresses.
You can also click each router and investigate IP before addressing on the config tab. Okay, this uh, this is the IP information. Or you can click on the device, go to config and search the IP address information with it. I recommend to use the CLI command line interface and enter and show running config or show run. Okay, and um, show running config, enter space, space. Now you can see the IP addresses on the interfaces. This is a dynamic routing configuration. What is the IP before address of the field hub in the packet tracer trace route output? Okay, go to the home PC output. The field hub is 10, 110, 178, 133. Which router and interface in the Monterey.ca building is configured with this IPv4 address? Okay, search for this 10, 110, 178, 133. Is this, uh, click here on this router. With interface you go with zero zero IP address ten one hundred ten one seventy eight one hundred thirty three and the name of the router is this okay is this What is the IP for others of the fourth hub in the packet tracer trace room output? Is this 10, 139, 198, 129? Which router and interface in the Monterey.ca building is configured with this IP for others? Okay, click here on this another router, command line interface, enter, enable. Okay, and show running config, show running config. Enable, show running config. Okay, and this the fourth hop 10, 139, 198, 129. Okay, on this interface, you got bit 00 IP address 10, 139, 198, 129. This is the name of the router. Or use the config tab. This is the name of the router and go here to interfaces to view the IP addresses when you go with zero zero. Why do you think the IP addresses for the other interfaces are not shown in the trace root output? Those interfaces are the source for the packets that are sent to the next hub destination. Source IP addresses are not shown in the trace root output. This is the source and this is the destination. 
click on the source PC0 command prompt and tracer to the destination this IP address 192.168.2.10 Trace complete This IP is the default gateway of PC0 is this IP this interface and this IP address. The second hub is 226, is this. And the third hub is 230, is this. And finally, the fourth hub is the destination. Notice that some IP addresses are not shown in Tracer because they are the sources. This, 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 and this. List the hubs in your own trace route output that belongs to your local ISP. Okay, this is my own trace route on command line interface on my computer. But I know these are these hubs are private IP addresses in my Internet service provider is using private IP addresses for the wide area network. So this private IP addresses belongs to my internet service provider. Okay, this. This IP addresses belongs to my internet service provider. But in your case, may vary, you can identify the internet service provider for the domain, okay, this domain. But in this real example, you can identify the, the IP addresses of the internet service provider by the uh, the main name, okay. Investigate the domain names in the output to discover more clues about the location of routers at each hub. The domain name, if there is one, in the trace route may provide additional information. There is no standard naming convention. If and uh, how it is used is solely up to the discretion of the administrator of the device. In the trace route output above, Comcast has provided information with the domain name that gives you a clue about where the router may actually be located. Okay, these these names. Uh, 
Okay, according to this, uh, according to this example, you have uh, these uh, these names. And they are listed here. All these names belongs to the internet service provider Comcast.net. But this part of the name can give you a clue about the where the router may actually be located. All of these cities are located with the same geographical region known as the San Francisco Bay Area, SFBA, and are controlled by Comcast, okay, SFBA, SFBA, San Francisco Bay Area. Okay, Monterey, California, Monterey, California, Santa Clara, California, Santa Clara, California, Sunnyvale, California, Sunnyvale, California, and San Jose, California, for this. We have made the assumption in Packet Tracer that all routers with the same city in the domain name are in the same data center. For example, as you have seen, these two routers are in the Monterey CA building. Okay, but on Monterey.ca SFBA. Monterey.ca SFBA. Okay, but on the same building. For example, this uh, this name, okay, for Comcast and others, if you see P O B E X E A E and B L at the in the domain name, this is most likely refers to the type of interface. PO is a port channel, AE and BE, port channel Ethernet bundle, XE for 10 gigabit Ethernet, and BL for VLAN. Okay, for example, here uh, BE is a port channel Ethernet bundle. Okay, and other parts of the domain name may include the type of router, such as CR for core router or PE for peering router. In this case is CR, core router. BE, port channel Ethernet bundle. BE, port channel Ethernet, Ethernet bundle. Uh, 1312 and core router 12 on Sunnybell CA. Okay, this is the the city and Comcast, the internet service provider. What information, if any, can you decipher from the domain names for your local internet service provider? In my case, I don't have domain names. Okay, but You can view, for example, this uh, this example AE sixty one AE is a port channel Ethernet bundle, a port channel Ethernet bundle number sixty one and H two 
is a uh, edge router number two. Uh, the location Los Angeles nine and the uh, internet service provider level three dot net. Or look at this XE. The this uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet connection XE number 11074 the location and the provider in packet tracer navigate to Monterey okay and back level Navigate up one level to intercity. Okay, back level. Now you can see intercity. This is Monterey. You will see a representation of the physical links between the home in Monterey and Oahu Island, where the server for the University of Hawaii is located in Honolulu. Okay, this is uh, home is in Monterey. So this is the physical connection. And goes to Honolulu. Hawaii Islands. Notice that the link first goes from Monterey to San Jose, Los Angeles, Pacific Ocean, and Honolulu. Monterey, San Jose, Los Angeles, Pacific Ocean, and Honolulu. Click San Jose. Notice there are three buildings. Click on San Jose. Three buildings. Each labeled with a part of the domain name discovered in the trace root output. Routers with the same domain name are located in the same building. Investigate each building router and interface to complete the following table. Hub 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Five. Is this? And... Uh, You need the domain name and the interface and the IP for others. Okay, uh, hop number five. Santa Clara. This is the domain name. B E is a uh, Ether channel bundle, and this is the IP address. Okay, you have the name and the IP address. You have the name and the IP address. I need the interface to go to Santa Clara. Click here on the building. Click here on the router. You can see a common line interface 
enter enable enter show running config show run enter space hop number five this is the IP address 10, 151, 78, 177 is this and the interface gigabit 00. So the interface gigabit 00. Number six. This is the name. This is the IP address. Okay, uh, but I need the interface back level. It's on Sunnyvale. Click on the building Sunnyvale and search this IP address. Okay, and click here on the first router, command line interface, enter, enable, enable, show running config, enter, space. This IP address is this IP address. So the interface is gigabit 00. Okay, so you have the domain name, the interface, and the IP address. Notice that the domain name is also the name of the router. The domain name is also the name of the router. And notice that the the main name is also the name of the router. Okay, and uh, hop seven, seven, you have the, the main name, the IP address, with search on Sony Bay. Okay, it should be this another router from Sony Bay. Click here. Command line interface. Enter. Enable. Enter. Show running config space. And this IP address 4630 is this 4630. So the interface is gigabit 00. Okay, and eight, eight. Okay, and this is another location. So back level. Uh, so uh, great. Now you have the domain name, the IP address, but go to great building to the first router command line interface enter enable show running config enter space space and this IP address here is having 178 is this and you be zero zero finally nine nine also on grid you have the you have the the main name the ip address but um, on this another router the second router command line interface enter enable show running config space this IP address 32 246 is this 
on gigabit 00, zero. okay the domain name is the router okay the router the IP of the interface the IP of the interface and the interface what is the building router interface and IP for others for the outbound link to Los Angeles okay and back level So this link goes to Los Angeles from San Jose to Los Angeles. Click here on the great building and search the router. And this is this is the link that goes from San Jose to Los Angeles. You can see the source device, source port. Now look at the name of the device, the destination device rtsw.losangeles.net.internet2.edu. So this interface is gigabit one zero. What is the building? The building is this, this name, okay, this name, this name, the router, this is the router, the interface, Okay, this is the interface. The interface is the source port, gigabit one zero, gigabit one zero, and the IP four address, and the IP four address for gigabit one zero is one seventy two sixteen twenty two hundred fifty four. IXP data center. An IXP Internet Exchange Point is typically a collocation center that houses ISPs and other customers with the purpose of connecting with one another. At some point, ISPs like Comcast will need to forward the packets to another ISP. This is usually occurs in an IXP. The locations are often thought of as being at the edge of an ISP's network meaning a place where packets leave the ISP's internal network and are forwarded to another ISP. This is a place where ISPs and others can exchange internet traffic between their networks. ISPs are typically owned and operated by a neutral party, meaning they are not an ISP or customer of their own data center. investigate the link between Comcast and Internet2. This last hub within the Comcast ISP network before packets are forwarded to another ISP occurs at hub 9. Okay, this hub, hub 9, this hub. Okay, this, look, look at this, the domain is Comcast, but on hub 10, the domain is different, is internet to that edu. Again, Comcast gives us a clue where the router is located. However, the domain name is not indicating a city with an address. Search the internet for Nine Great Oaks, California and you will find that uh, the data center is located at Nine Grid Oaks Boulevard in San Jose, California. 
Night, Great Oaks, California. Okay, uh, Equinix SB5 at Nine Great Oaks Boulevard Data Center. Okay, click here. Equinix operates this data center in San Jose, located at Nine Great Oaks Boulevard. Equinix has currently commissioned six. 1300 kilowatts at the proposed built facility. View all Equinix facilities. Okay, now you can see the facilities around the world. Okay, but we are talking about uh, Equinix SB5 Nine Great Oaks Boulevard, San Jose, California. Equinix is an internet exchange point (ISP) known as Equinix SB5. It provides connections between different ISPs and is hosting the connection between Comcast and the next ISP, which is Internet2. There are many websites that provide information about large IXP data centers, including the ISPs they host. Search the Internet for Inflex Data Center. Inflex Data Center. Okay, inflex.com, click here. Use the website to explore and see if you can find where they list Comcast as one of the organizations hosted at Equinix SB5. Okay, uh, explore data centers. Okay, search for SB5, and this is Equinix SB5. Click here. Equinix SB5, Night Great Oaks Boulevard, San Jose, California. Equinix connects leading business to their customers, employees, and partners inside the world's most connected data center in 44 markets across the world. Equinix operates data centers in the USA, in Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Dallas, Denver, Los Angeles, Miami, New York, Philadelphia, Seattle, Silicon Valley, and Washington, D.C. In Packet Racer, navigate to San Jose if necessary, and then click the Nine Great Oaks.ca building. Okay, and Back level here. Um, this is San Jose. This is uh, Great Oaks. Okay, click here. Notice the name of the third router in the rack indicates that it belongs to Internet 2. Okay, look at the name. internet2.edu This router is the 10th hub in the trace route output. This is This name rtsw sangnet internet2.edu Okay uh, hub number 10 
what is the interface for the tent hub? Okay, and review the IP address 172, 169, 141. And it's placed in gigabit 00. Click on the router, command line interface, enter, enable, show running config, space, space. This is IP address 172.16.69.141. Place it on in interface gigabit 00. Investigate Internet 2. Internet 2? Is this, is this a new version of the Internet? No. Internet 2 is a non for profit ISP. It is a consortium of research, education, industry, and government communities that provide high-speed network services, cloud services, and other services for research and education. Search for the Wikipedia information and other websites to get more information about Internet 2. Okay, Internet 2. No space. Wikipedia. Okay, um, English. Internet two is a not for profit United United States Computer Networking Consortium. In the Internet two community develops and deploys network technologies for the future of Internet. These technologies include large-scale network performance measurement and management tools. What speed is the Internet backbone that provides connection between its members? Internet 2 provides the United States research and education community with a network that satisfies their bandwidth intensive requirements. The network itself is a dynamic, robust, and cost-effective hybrid optical and packet network. It furnishes a 100 gigabit per second network backbone to more than 210 United, United States educational institutions, 70 corporations, and 45 non-profit and government agencies. For fun, search for this man launched a new internet service provider from his garage. This man launched an internet service provider from his garage. Okay, and click here. A resident of the small town of Dillon Beach, he found the service to his town was too slow and expensive. After months chasing down companies to get access to internet infrastructure, he finally started a do-it-by-yourself ISP in his garage. And neighbors were clamoring for access to his faster, cheaper, and better service network. Very nice. Investigate the link to Los Angeles. Our trace route reveals that the NAS hub is another Internet 2 router. The domain name provides us with this information. Okay, this is the 11 hub okay, Internet 2.edu. A search of Internet 2 router proxy may help you to verify that the LOSA in the domain name indicates that this Internet 2 router is in Los Angeles, California. IP packets have left the San Francisco Bay Area SV, SFBA are traveling south up about uh, 350 miles to Los Angeles, California. 
in Pocket Racer navigate to intercity level and then click Los Angeles. Okay, back level, back level. This is the intercity and go to Los Angeles down here. Los Angeles. Okay, okay. from San Jose go to Los Angeles. Okay, and uh, the Lausa Net Internet to that EDU building is located somewhere in Los Angeles. Click the building, click here. Okay, Lausa Net Internet to that EDU. The rack has one router which is connected to the San Francisco Bay Area and a submarine cable that crosses the Pacific Ocean. What is the interface used for this 11 hub in the trace root output? Okay, only uh, review the IP address 172.16.20.255. Let's place it here. Click here on the router, command line interface, enter, enable, show running config, space. This is the IP address 172.16.20.255, gigabit 00. Okay, the answer is gigabit 00. On this router, RTSW loads and add internet to that EDU. Okay, this name. Investigate the link across the Pacific Ocean. The next hub in our trace route is 12. It's only an IP address. You can review. 12 is only an IP address. Also, there is no domain name information provided. There are two pieces of interesting information here. Also, you cannot use the IP address for this example as it has been converted to a private IP address. You can use the IP lookup website to determine who owns the IP address for your result. In the example here, the outdoors were able to determine that the IP address for Hub 12 also belongs to Internet 2. Even more interesting is when we look at the round trip times of 85 milliseconds, 87 milliseconds, and 85 milliseconds. Notice that there is a large increase in the time compared to the previous hub from San Jose to Los Angeles, 24, 24, and 23 milliseconds. Why do we see smaller incremental increases for hops 1 to 11, and then such a big jump to in the round trip time at hop 12? Okay, now review the hops. Now you can review the the round trip times from 1 to 11, 3, 13, 44, 13, uh, 16, 24. Okay, the maximum number is uh, 44 or 27. But on hop 12 is 85. Okay. Uh, Why do we see smaller incremental increases from hops 1 to 11 and then as such a big jump to in the round trip time at hop 12? We can deduce that this router at hop 12 must be much further away than the previous router at hop 11 in Los Angeles, California.
we also notice that there are no other places in our trace route that show such a large difference in times as there is between hub 11 in California and hub 12. Therefore, these packets must have traveled a much longer distance than any other two points in, along the path from Monterey to Hawaii. The router at Hub 12 must be in Hawaii, where packets traveled almost 2,500 miles from California. This router is at the Internet 2 Pure Exchange IP. 2x in Hawaii and is the last hub within the Internet 2 network. IP2x forwards packets to the next hub router belonging to the University of Hawaii. Search the Internet for submarine cable map and see if you can locate any submarine cables that have a landing point both in Hermosa Beach and Hawaii. Submarine cable map. Okay, click here and decide. Okay, this is amazing and Landing point, both in Hermosa Beach and Hawaii. Okay, this is Hawaii. And this is Oahu and okay, this is Oahu and follow these these links. Okay, here there is a point uh, near to Redondo Beach. There is uh, here is Hermosa Beach, and is this link? This link. See us follow this uh, green link. And goes to Oahu, Oahu, Hawaii. See us. How many submarine cables terminate at Hermosa Beach? Mm. Go again to Hermosa Beach. There are two there are two cables there are two connections on Hermosa Beach. The green cable C us and the turquoise cable Jupiter. Okay, so the answer
So the answer is uh, CS and Jupiter. Two submarine cables. What is the name of submarine cable that runs from Hermosa Beach to Hawaii? Okay, I know is this green sea us. Sea, sea us uh, that goes to Hawaii. Okay, the answer is C us. What is the name? What is the name of the landing point in Hawaii? Okay. CS cable goes to Makaha. Makaha, Hawaii. So the answer is Makaha, Hawaii. How many submarine cables terminate at this landing point in Hawaii? Okay, this is Makaha. The first one is uh, Japan US cable network. The second is C us. The third is this. HIFN Hawaii Island Fiber Network. Number four is Paniolo Cable Network. Another Japan US Cable Network. And another CS Cable. Six cables. The CS cable was done through partnership between the University of Hawaii and Ram Telecom International. This partnership allows the University of Hawaii system to connect Hawaii to the continental United States, Guam and beyond. Search for underwater cable speeds. UH connections across Pacific to find an article and video about this cable being laid across the Pacific Ocean. Okay, search for underwater cable speeds underwater okay, UH connections across Pacific okay videos and information UH okay this this is very good Okay, the ability for our UH community to communicate and collaborate throughout the region using these modern high capacity submarine fiber optic cable systems. I think it's absolutely critical to make sure that we can do the best job that we can do for our University of Hawaii community as well as for our global stake holders. For more information, search YouTube or other video sites for submarine cable. You will find many videos showing how these cables are constructed and laid across the seabed. In packet racer navigate to intercity level. Okay, back level. 
follow the cable across the Pacific Ocean. Okay. Uh, back level. This is intercity. Uh, follow the cable across the Pacific Ocean. Okay, the repeaters, repeater one, repeater number two. Search the internet to find how many kilometers separate each repeater on a submarine cable. How many kilometers? Separate repeaters on submarine cable. Along with the cable, the ship lays repeaters at great depth. These are optical amplifiers spaced 80 kilometers apart. The repeaters are units that regenerate the optical signals after the alternation by propagation through each span and regular positions along the cable. 50 to 120 kilometers apart from each other. Okay, it's very good. Between 50 and 120 kilometers. Click Honolulu. Okay, click Honolulu. You are now on the island of Oahu. Notice that the submarine cable terminates at Makaha. Okay, this is the this is Makaha. Click I2PX Hawaii building. Okay, this is IPX2 Hawaii. It should be this. Okay, IPX2. In the rack are two routers. Okay, two routers. The first the first one belongs to I2PX. And represents the 12 hub in the trace root output. Okay, hub number 12. This IP 172.16.47.134. On gigabit 00, 00 on the first router. So this is true. What interface is assigned to the 12 hub? Okay, and gigabit 00, zero or click on the router command line interface. Enter, enable, show running config space 172, 16, 44. Is this okay? And is Gigabit zero zero of the of this router I two PX Hawaii. Investigate the link between Internet two and the University of Hawaii network. The next hub is the number thirteen, and the domain is UHNet. Uh, University of Hawaii Net and that net. The domain name for this router indicates that it's part of the University of Hawaii Network, UH Net. 
This router is located at the Honolulu Internet Exchange HIX in Honolulu, Hawaii. Most likely located within the same IXP as the I2PX Hawaii router. Notice that the second router in I2PX Hawaii rack is Colanut RE0 uhnet.net okay is this this is the second router on the rack colanut re0 uhnet.net what interface is assigned to the 13 hub okay and search this ip 205.166.205.166 Okay, no IP here or you know, click in the router. Enable the show running config. Okay, and okay, but look at this. And uh, okay, this is an error because go back to hop 13 on the original example this is the number 13 and the ip is different it's 172.30.205.29 i repeat 172.30.205.29 and it's placed on the second router on gigabit 00 172.30.205.29 Okay, click on the second router on Colanut. Okay, so okay, and uh, it's placed on gigabit 00 172 So the answer here is in gigabit 00. zero on Colanut router. Investigate the last known IP address in the trace root output. Okay, uh, in Packet Tracer, all the hubs are simulated. Navigate back to Honolulu and investigate uhnet.net building and hawaii.edu campus. In each building, you will find the devices that simulate the rest of the trace route path in Packet Tracer. Okay, um, back level, go to the NETS hub, is UHNET with these IP addresses. On gigabit 00, 172 30, 213, that's 2. Next hop, gigabit 00, 172 31, that's 2. Back level. The next is the, the, the destination Hawaii. And then gigabit 00, 172 32 2 and the server the server the last hub is 172.31.149.56 so you can verify the server okay so you can verify the the last hops on Packet Tracer. The destination is the server 172.31.149.56 and it's this 172.31.149.56 very nice. In real world trace route output the hops being to timeout. For example in this activity the times out at hop 15 
Okay, uh, in that example, 15 request timeout. In my PC, uh, request timeout on 16. For Hall 14, the name implies that this is another router that is part of the University of Hawaii network. At this point, the trace route begins to time out. Okay, this is the Hall 14. It's a router with this IP address. In my PC, this is the router Colanut. The Colanut is part of University of Hawaii. It is common for routers and other devices, such as a web server, not to respond to trace route messages. A router may even be configured to deny any trace route messages being forwarded on to the NetHub router. Most likely, a University of Hawaii router or firewall prior to the web server is blocking any further trace routes messages from entering the network. Finally, conclusion and some things to consider. We saw that from tracking the hops in our trace route, that our packets went through three different groups of networks. Comcast ISP, Internet to ISP, University of Hawaii Network. Comcast ISP from Hub 1 to 9, Internet 2 from 10 to 12, and Hawaii University from 13, and next hubs. Comcast, Internet2, and University of Hawaii are each known as an autonomous system, AS. The Internet is an interconnection of hundreds of autonomous systems throughout the world. On the Internet, packets are forwarded between autonomous systems. An autonomous system is typically an ISP, such as Comcast, uh, telecommunications providers such as Internet2, uh, connect providers such as Netflix, uh, companies such as Cisco Systems, or educational institutions such as the University of Hawaii. And the packets from Home Network in Monterey, California to the University of Hawaii were forwarded from Comcast ISP to Internet2 ISP and and eventually the University of Hawaii. Within each of these autonomous systems, the packets were forwarded by multiple routers belonging to each autonomous system. Bonus, did you try to switch into logical mode? This mode was left unlocked so that the curious student may find the light in discovering what the physical representation of the trace route in this activity may look like as a logical topology. Okay, up here, go to logical mode. This is locked. Switching to logical workspace is locked. And what is going on here? Okay, don't worry. And later in the following modules, it will be very easy to build our own network in logical mode using the results of Tracer as a reference. So don't worry about this. Thank you very much.